Okay, let's talk about virtual environment in that video. This is something that many students ask me uh, over and over again because it might be confusing and I will try to clear out the idea of having virtual environment and how to manage that in a PyCharm. So what we will be talking in this video is a virtual environment that is built in a Python and how to make sure we are have that virtual uh, environment, how to manage that and use it. So let's start creating mkdir and I will say project pi. I will go to project pi and I, I'm inside that uh, folder now. So I will create our virtual environment. There is a multiple ways to do that. So there is a different packages that can create and manage virtual environment. But what I will do in this video, I will use the one that is built in Python 3. So I will say Python 3 and there is a mode vmv. That means there is a package built in a Python 3 uh, called vmv. And now I have a chance to name my virtual environment. You can name it whatever you like. What I usually do is I name it in the same way as VM. So VM is always my virtual environment for that project. So I will create one here, clicking enter. And in a few seconds it is done. So how can I actually tell if that was done? So I can say ls lh. So I can check what is actually in that folder. And I can see I have a folder vm in my project pi. And this is directory. So it is it's create a folder vm inside it. So Okay, I have virtual environment, but it doesn't mean that I actually use it. So to use it, we need to activate it. Uh, so let's open uh, PyCharm here. So I will do charm and dot. That means it will open PyCharm in the current uh, directory. If you don't have that uh, enabled, you can also enable that in PyCharm. Going to tools here in, in the tools, you can create command line launcher. Uh, okay, so we have our PyCharm uh, open my project Py. So uh, I can also open the terminal and we can check if our virtual environment is used. We can for sure see it is actually here. So vnv is a folder, we have some files in it and we have it there. So what exactly is vmv? vmv it's a copy of our Python. So what we do here is we take our Python tree, the, the version that we use to create our virtual environment, and it has been copied to that folder. So you can see here, Python 3.9, so one project might be dependent on 3.7, another project might be dependent on Python 2. And virtual environment will help us manage that. So you can install project directly for that project, only for that project in that virtual environment. And that will keep things separate. Okay, so we have uh, copied whatever we created uh, virtual environment, we copied that into that uh, folder. So we have it there, but it doesn't mean that we actually use it. And there is a, um, in terminal here, you can see that uh, this is the name of the folder. If you will have your virtual environment activate, you can expect the name of the virtual environment that will be at the beginning of this uh, line. So what I can do is I can say which Python and it will tell me which Python is used at the moment. And you can see at the moment I'm using user bin Python. This is something that is installed on my machine globally. This is not pointing to my virtual environment. So Python doesn't know about my virtual environment, despite the fact it is actually in here in the folder. And the reason for that is I need to tell this is the virtual environment. Sometimes um, PyCharm will catch it automatically if you have the um, interpreter already selected. So let's go to PyCharm and I will click preferences. And here we have project project Py. Uh, so I can expand this. And here, this, this is what I've created. So this is um, the preferences of, for my project. I can select Python interpreter. And you can see here, there is no interpreter selected. That means we haven't told uh, PyCharm that we use that uh, specific version of Python. So no, no selected. You can click here and select one of the uh, interpreter you have, but you have a cog icon here and you can actually add a new one. So I will add a new one and we have this a window to select the interpreter here. You can create a new one. So we can see here, we, if you haven't done it yet, you can open the folder and create that with a Python and you can select the, which version of Python and what, what is the name of the 
uh, of a virtual environment but we already have one so we have existing one and you can see here you have different uh, versions so we uh, at the moment use virtual environment but you can also use the package uh, ppm uh, if you if you like uh, we're not gonna use it we are using the vm from python so we have existing environment and uh, python is smart enough to go to our uh, project project pi and it can see in vms bin we have python so this is the one that we actually want to use so if i will click ok you can see here now we have interpreter which is python 3.9 from my my folder in vms and i have some package installed with this so i will apply and i will go ok so at the moment Python knows we have virtual environment uh, activated. But if I will do which Python here again, it still doesn't know. So terminal is different from uh, configuration here. In the, if you have it here in the preferences, interpreter set up properly, it doesn't mean it will be in your terminal. So I will close my PyCharm again, uh, and I will open it again like the project Py. And look what will happen now. now I have that VM here. Uh, that means uh, PyCharm Py already knew there is a preferences, the Py Py uh, Python interpreter is set up for this project and opening new terminal, it will automatically activate your virtual environment. And you can tell by the uh, beginning of the line, you have in uh, parentheses, you have name of your virtual environment, which is VM. And now if I will do Py, which Python, you can see it is the one from my project folder, VMs bin Python. So it is activated, but you need to make sure this is, you see that name of the virtual environment here in the parentheses. That means it is activated. And you need to make sure that in preferences, you have Python interpreter here. So if I will go here and install some packages, I'm expecting it will be installed here. So let's say I will do pip install Django. So it, it is installed, but I just want to make sure that it has been installed in a proper place, which is uh, here. So I have some libraries uh, here and I have like site packages. Um, this is not the way that you, you will check it, but uh, if, if you uh, install something with pip install, that means it will go to v, that v, vm, and you can uh, kind of expect it that it will be one or one of the um, packages that has been installed here. But uh, normally you don't even need to open this. So you can check that in uh, Python preferences. So you see Python interpreter here and Django has been installed on that virtual environment. So I have Django here. I didn't have that before. You can actually install some packages uh, directly from here. So you can click add. And let's say I will have below. And that's the package for images. And I can say install package. And it has been installed successfully. I can close it and I can see Django and Pillow is installed. So one way is to install from here or you can um, uninstall uh, and uh, or you can update it like you can see here. Uh, but you can man manage all the packages here. So once it is uh, pointing to a proper virtual environment, it will be to manage uh, from here and also from here. What's actually uh, uh, what is the way to check what is installed in a terminal? We can use pip freeze command. So pip freeze will tell me what packages are installed in the current virtual environment. So you can see here I have Django that has been installed. I have a pillow and uh, some other things that has been built in. Okay, so this is actually mm, installed properly and it's activated. If I will deactivate here, you can see I don't see that VM at the beginning of the line now. And if I will do pip freeze, that means to tell me what packages has been installed on uh, this. I don't see the Django anymore. You can see I have other things installed here. And this is uh, things installed globally on my machine, not in virtual environment. So if you ever do pip install Django and you don't have any virtual environment, it will be installed globally on your uh, machine. Uh, that will be on on the Python, and uh, if you do some like if you let's say you have a Django, uh, so you could do like Python manage by 
run server, you uh, run server. You could expect it will run a Django from that place, but to run server you need to have a Django. And if Django is installed not in the place where you actually is, it's not going to work. So this is something that uh, sometimes uh, the students have a problem with because the virtual environment is not activated automatically. You need to set it up. You need to make sure you use it. So uh, here. Uh, we already have that um, activated. If you don't, uh, well, we, we had it activated by PyCharm automatically, but if you don't have it here, you need to activate it manually. So the, the thing is, if you uh, create a new terminal, usually the new terminal will pick it up automatically from the uh, PyCharm preferences. So you can see here it is. Uh, there, but if the, if it's not there, the virtual environment, then you need to activate it. The way to activate it is source vnv bin and activate. So bas basically, what you're uh, doing is you pointing to that activate script. So you go vnv bin and activate. You have it here. So what you need to do is you need to activate it. So you click it here and it is activated. To deactivate it, you can see deactivate and it will be deactivated. But this is the way to do it on Unix system, so on Mac and uh, Linux. If you're on Windows, the way to activate your virtual environment is env backslash scripts with capital S backslash and then activate. So basically, this is how you activate it. I'm not on a Windows now, so I'm not going to activate it. So once you run this command, you are expecting to see that VM as well. And this is two different ways that you can activate it on different uh, system. If you're Windows, just use it here and you will have activated. But if you already have that open new terminal or open a new um, uh, PyCharm open that project again, it should be activated here. So make sure your virtual environment is activated here in the terminal. It is also uh, activated here in the Python interpreter and you will have no problem to managing packages that uh, has been installed. And, uh, also, uh, whenever you have some project that you can run here uh, from a configuration, like I uh, mentioned before, uh, run server, you can add a configuration to, to run it and you can click run my Django or Flask or whatever you are using, you can run it from here. But it's important to have that Python interpreter use because if you run it from here, the, the Python will look for that uh, Python interpreter. And if you don't have it pointing to the right place and you don't have that packages installed in the right place, that means it's not going to run. So it's not going to work uh, this way. And hopefully that kind of uh, clears out uh, how to use the uh, virtual environment, how to set up your uh, PyCharm uh, to use it uh, properly and how to find out uh, what is going on. So a few comments that uh, it's worth to uh, remember is which Python which will actually tell you what is the current Python that you, you are using and pip freeze. So it will tell you what is actually installed on your virtual environment to make sure that this is installed properly. Also in a user interface is much easier because you select here and you will see exactly what is uh, selected. So hopefully that uh, helped you uh, understand it and see you in the next one.